Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mark Roden, and today we are going to be going over the good, the bad, and the ugly on the sixth generation Honda Civic. The sixth gen is the one that people commonly refer to as the EK. However, Civics have a ridiculous number of different chassis codes depending on exactly which trim level and body style that you end up getting. So I'm just going to call it the sixth gen to make it easy. I, I, like I, for example, I know the Civic SI of this generation is called the EM1. And then the Type R is the EK, uh, and then there's different chassis codes for the sedan, DX versions, and all that. It's crazy. But the way these vids work, in case you're new here and you don't know what a good, bad, and ugly is, is I read off the script for this part, so bear with me. First, I go over everything you need to know, then how it does in certain forms of motorsports, or just what the community does with it in general. Uh, then I go over the good, the bad, and the ugly. Good is just things that are good about it. Bad are kind of take it or leave it things. If it affects you, then that's a bad thing. If it doesn't affect you, then who cares? And then ugly is problems with the car that everybody's going to experience that you need to like address and then at the end i give my final thoughts on whether or not i think you should buy the car depending on your current situation and the situations we have our daily driver car guy daily driver which are two completely different things if you're just watching this as a normal person who doesn't care about cars you're a daily driver if you're a car guy we all know that even though we're buying a daily, it's going to be a fun daily. Uh, and then I think the next one is project car. And then the last one is Sunday cruiser or something like that. Um, but those are the four like different forms that we go over. But without further ado, let's go right into the, the good, the bad and the ugly on the sixth generation Honda Civic. All right, so the first thing we're going to be talking about is everything about the car that you need to know really first off is the years that it was made it was made from 1996 and 2000 and like i said before it's the sixth generation of the honda civic the trim levels are as follows there's a lot of them and i try to get into uh, you know kind of detailed about uh, the trim levels but it's kind of hard to so um here they go the cx the dx the vp and the lx trims all share the same motor a 1.6 liter inline four making 106 horsepower called the d16y7 and that uh car all those different trim levels the differences between them are very minuscule so definitely don't really worry too much about it if you're getting one of those uh the hx came with the same motor but now with something called vtec e and the motor was now called the d16 y5 and made 115 horsepower which is slightly better the ex also shared the same engine but now it was called the d16 y8 and made 127 horsepower so once again slightly better then of course the si trim came along and changed the entire thing on its head now it was equipped with a b16 a2 making 160 horsepower yes a B series very good motor and then obviously the type R was the best but it came with something called the B 16 B amazing amazing motor making a wonderful 182 horsepower but this car was not offered in most um, markets around the world pretty much only Japan next is the body styles the car was offered in a coupe sedan and a hatchback no convertible options but Either way, that, that, that's pretty good in my opinion. The drivetrains, the car is front wheel drive only, no all wheel drive models, obviously no rear wheel drive models, only front wheel drive. The transmissions, it was offered as either an automatic or a manual. Automatic is an absolute slush box. So if you are gonna get one of these cars, make sure you get a manual, You uh, at least if you're going for performance. If you're not going for performance, then the auto is fine. Uh, the price, nowadays it's literally all over the place it's anywhere from one thousand dollars to ten thousand dollars depending on trim level and you can even get up to like twenty five to fifty thousand dollars if you're buying a nice condition type r it is crazy uh, i would say most people watching this video are probably looking at the coupe version si if you're looking for one of those you're probably looking about spending around 5k to 7k i would say reliability and the gas mileage incredibly reliable at least stock it is obviously once you start to modify cars reliability goes out the window and the gas mileage is 27 miles per gallon combined which is very good very very good all right partner 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 buddy let's get into the aftermarket world the need for speed underground i got the need for speed Woo -hoo! Uh, we're going to be going over here, baby, what people like to do with this car when they modify it. Let's start with drifting. Obviously, they don't do this. It's front wheel drive. Jimmy Oaks did it somehow, actually. So I take that back. Jimmy Oaks has a sixth gen Civic that he drifts, but that's the only person that's ever done it. Rally slash off road builds or overland builds, whatever you want to call it. Once again, obviously not very, not very done often. That's a that's a word. I said it. It makes sense. Next street. Definitely the most popular for sure. People like to buy these and turn them into a little bit of a sleeper car and rip around on the streets at nighttime. Very good option for that. Track racing. Very good as well, especially type R or SI models. The car is incredibly light with a very good engine, at least if you're getting the SI or the D series is still a pretty decent engine, but not as good as a B series. So 
But yeah, track racing is pretty good. Lightweight car, easy to modify. And then obviously stance slash show builds, people that like to just make them look cool. Obviously they're seen quite a bit because it is a Civic, but I think it actually is not the most popular option with this car, which is nice to see. Uh, I think people are finally starting to realize that these Civics don't really look that special. So turning them into a show build doesn't really make much sense. Might as well build it into a track car, have fun with it and have it look cool at the same time. But now let's get into the good, the bad, and the ugly. The way that this works, like I said before, is first I go over the good. Rachel thinks they're just great about the car. If you try telling me they're not good about the car, I'll slap you in the face. Next is the bad. Things that are kind of take it or leave it. You know, if it affects you, it affects you. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And then this is the ugly, which are problems with the car you're going to have to address. First, let's get into the good. The price. They're very cheap cars. Even if you are buying an SI, yes, 5K to 6K for a 90 Civic is expensive. But if you really think about what it holds, the clout that it has, and the amount of money that you're going to get back from it, as long as you take care of it, it really isn't that much. I mean, honestly, if you buy an EM1 Civic Coupe right now, I don't know why I said Coupe there, it's already implied with the EM1 part. But if I bought an e, if you buy an EM1 right now, and you hold on to it for like two years, you're gonna get your money back and then some. Um, so they, the price is actually really good. Next is the reliability is obviously incredible. It's a late 90s, early 2000s Civics. What else do you expect? Next is the car actually has decent cup holders for its time. Now, obviously, since this is a 90s, 2000s car, the cup holders are gonna be a little bit small. Um, everything got a little bit wider since then. So you're not gonna be buying no Arizona iced teas, but if you slap yourself a sippy cup or you get like a, you get like a tummy yummy, yeah, dude, it's gonna fit, all right? It's gonna fit. You maybe get yourself a small, coke from mcdonald's that boy's fitting a large no that ain't gonna fit but a small yeah yeah you're good next is the car has tons of aftermarket support obviously it's a civic and it's probably the most popular civic generation out there it's ridiculous how much aftermarket support this car you could buy a freaking turbo from rockstar games if you wanted to they everybody makes them next is the community is amazing now this is personal opinion but trust me honda guys just want to have fun and to them it's not a you know how most communities are like oh if you don't fit the bill you're not a part of our community civic honda guys are not like that at all they just are like oh the more the merrier hey there's another honda guy oh yours is bone stock that's all right i still like you and it's awesome it really is amazing there's not many communities like that in the car world and i love them for that next is the car is incredibly light and fun to drive around in twisties it's just like a miata baby so if you like that kind of stuff Next is if you get a manual, the price will only continue to go up if you keep good care of it. These are turning into collector JDM cars. Think of it like the S13. Think of it like the A86. That's what they're turning into. The EG Civic, it's already kind of happening too. So the EK is only a matter of time. Next is it's super easy to work on. It's a perfect first car, to be honest. It won't hurt the wallet at all. And you can learn. It's really, really, really simple. Trust me, I have an Integra and the Integra pretty much shares everything from the Civic of that generation. And they are so easy everything is right there in front of you so easy to get on and off it's, it's amazing it really is and finally for the good is the price of everything else not only is it cheap to buy the car but it's cheap to maintain and build the car as well i told the story before but i'm gonna say it again i needed to buy a transmission mount and both motor mounts for my integra and it cost me a total of 70 dollars. that's cheap and it's not just the transmission and motor mounts are actually stiffer aftermarket ones that are like actually better and it was still only 70 bucks that's really good but now let's get into the bad again these are things that are kind of take or leave it if it affects you then that is a bad thing but if it doesn't affect you then it's a good thing i see a lot of people think that every time i say something bad in the bad tier tier for these good bad and uglies they think that i'm trying to hate on their car i am not i'm just putting it out there so that people if they care about it can worry about it first up is i always start with the sound so here's a clip to let you decide whether or not you think it sounds good next are the looks are kind of boring for sure I personally like them, but I can definitely see why a lot of people don't. It is just, at the end of the day, another 90s, early 2000s sedan from Japan. Uh, next is the price uh, Price for SI models is getting a little ridiculous, and Type R models already are ridiculous. It really does suck. Chances are I'm never going to own a Type R EK Civic. Would I actually buy them even if they were affordable? Probably not, to be honest with you. I like the SI just as much anyway um but yeah i mean 50k for a civic is crazy next is the interior is cheap and plastic full of plastic but i absolutely kind of like it because i like that kind of old style early 2000s minimalist kind of thing uh but most people probably won't so i put it in the bad next is the time to shift between gears is crazy long i actually test drove one of these cars back when i was trying to get my integra 
Get a short throw shifter as soon as possible when you buy one. Next is the interior is very cramped for a tall person, so keep that in mind. I didn't know that before buying my Integra. I just kind of was too enthralled with the car itself to even realize that it was really small in the interior. But I definitely was a little bit like, oh yeah, this is a little cramped. Uh, next is it's not a clout mobile. If you only want Insta followers or TikTok clout for all the Charlie D'Amelios and Addison Rays to show you their butt cheeks, this is not the car for you, man. Don't buy it, all right? Next is it's not very fast out of the gate. It's got a good motor to build, but don't expect to be a racer while stock, okay? It's a Civic. Uh, I, I can't like stress that enough. You are making less than 160 horsepower, buddy. Next is it's front wheel drive only, which is always definitely questionable. I like rear wheel drive. Most people don't really like front wheel drive. Um, so putting it out there. And finally for the bad is all the problems that the car does have, which is funny because the problems are very similar problems to my Integra, uh, which just goes to show how similar the two cars are. But all the problems are very minor things. So things like motor mounts, power window, power window motors, and the hood release cable may fail. And even the trunk struts like to fail in the back. Literally all those things, the power window motor, the hood release cable, the motor mounts, and the trunk struts have all broke on my Integra as well. And let me tell you, it doesn't matter. They're all incredibly small. The motor mounts is the biggest one there, and even that isn't that big a video. But now let's get into the ugly. These are problems with the car you're definitely going to have to actually address or at least think of when buying one. Uh, by far, the worst part of this car is the wonderful automatic transmission. I don't think this needs to be said, but a cheap 90s Honda should always be bought in a manual unless you want to go like... 10 miles per hour and then shift gear and drop down to five miles per hour uh, it's it's ridiculous they're not good automatic transmissions they're not meant to be race cars in the first place they're a civic and so the automatic is not going to be fast at all and finally for the ugly is the fact that these boys get stolen uh it depends on where you live obviously but if you live in a bad neighborhood just be honest with yourself and buy some extra security for it nobody's going to judge you if you live in a bad neighborhood and you're playing it safe okay you bought this car with your own money hopefully and you're not gonna you don't want to lose it these cars are quite literally the most stolen car in the world if especially if you get a white one though if you get a white e, six gen civic put some extra security on it hire a security team as a matter of fact put a sentry gun on the top of it or something put some bear traps some spike trips if you played rainbow six siege put a frost mat on the side of it put whatever you can on the side of that car to make sure people don't break into it because these cars get stolen all the time so my final thoughts on the good old fashioned sixth generation Honda Civic. Do I think you should buy it depending on the scenario you're in? First of all, for a daily driver, a normal daily driver, not a car guy daily, this is a very good option. Although I do think there are better ones. If you are just gonna get a car that you just wanna drive from point A to point B on time and you don't care how cool it is, get an eighth or ninth generation Civic. If you just need the daily, the modern features are gonna go a long way. And on top of that, they're honestly around the same price now because EK Civics are flying up in price. Next is car guy dailies. Uh, very, very good. It's easy to work on, fun to build and drive, and everything is dirt, dirt cheap for the car, so absolutely i think for a car guy daily it is a good option next is for a sunday cruiser it's definitely not the best option uh it's a civic you don't have to wait until sunday to cruise around in a civic all right it's not gonna break you don't have, like a sunday cruiser something like a corvette or like a porsche you know you, it, this is a civic you don't worry about that next is a race car slash project car very good option definitely the best option if you're in this boat i would definitely recommend getting it since the eg is getting too expensive this is an amazing option i honestly kind of like these better than the eg anyway and they're getting cheaper they're around they're a little bit cheaper than the egs right there i would say they're around the same price um but yeah very good option easy to build fun to build dirt cheap to build everything actually matters you get 10 horsepower and it actually matters in this car because they're so light uh definitely a good option I, I i recommend this car for sure ladies and gentle hairs that is the end of today's video i hope you guys enjoyed if you did please be sure to like comment down below and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this what other uh next good bad and ugly is going to be on the mazda rx8 by the way so don't recommend that one but recommend me a good bad and ugly that you'd like to see in the comments i really do i i mean this with all my heart I, every time I make a good, bad, and ugly, it's from a recommendation from somebody else. So if you want to see your car, leave a comment. I don't do these off of my, just, just my opinion. You know, I don't like to just go like, you know what? I want to do a good, bad, and ugly on this car. I don't do that. I only do them based on what other people comment and tell me to do. So if you want to see your car, leave a comment. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. I love each and every one of you. That was a kiss from me to you. Das Vidania, and have a nice night.